All right, we are about to begin lesson 9.4, and I always like to start this lesson with the battleship game, which I don't have with me, but I created this board to simulate a battleship board. It has the alphabet across the top, numbers down the side, and then I've placed my four ships so that my opponent can't see them. And your opponent, while playing the game, will call out coordinates. They'll say something like, B2, and you'll go, okay, B2, nope, no hit. And then you get to say to your opponent, um, G3, and they'll tell you whether or not you made a hit, and then they get to come back, and they'll say, H3, and you'll say, hit. Now, the person playing the game knows all right, so either the boat is going this way or this way, and so I'm going to choose coordinates that are near what the hit that I've already made. And so maybe the next one they'll call out will be H2, and you'll say no hit. Then they know, okay, so it's not going that way. On the next round, they can say G3, G3 and you'll say hit, and so on. Okay, um, and then whoever sinks all the battleships first wins the game. Well, this lesson isn't a whole lot different than the battleship game. It's uh, all you're doing is finding coordinates on a grid like this game, and uh, it's just a little bit different format. All right, let's take a look. To begin our lesson, um, about graphing relationships on page 371 of your book, we read the essential question, how can you graph the relationships between two quantities? You have learned that tables and equations are two ways to represent the relationship between two quantities. You can also represent a relationship between two quantities by using a graph. So in the last lesson we used tables in this lesson, we're going to use graphs, and this is a really useful lesson for the rest of your life. Um, knowing, knowing how graphs are structured gives you all kinds of important information. When you read newspapers or um, read textbooks, it helps you to understand the relationship between two quantities. All right, unlock the problem. A cafeteria has a pancake making machine. The table shows the relationship between the time and hours and the number of pancakes the machine can make. Graph the relationship represented by the table. So here's our table with all of our data. We have time and we have pancakes made. So in one hour they can make 200 pancakes. In two hours they can make 400 pancakes. By five hours they've made a thousand pancakes. That's an awful lot of pancakes. All right. Use the table values to graph the relationships. First, write the ordered pairs. And if you remember from the last lesson, ordered pairs always are in alpha order. So X comes before Y. Uh, let X represent the time in hours and Y represent the, represent the number of pancakes made. Use each row of the table to write an ordered pair. So they did the first one for us. So they have in one hour, they made 200 pancakes. One hour, 200 pancakes. This is going to be our X coordinate. This is going to be our Y coordinate. So for the second one, in two hours, they made 400 pancakes. So we're going to write the 400 over here in the Y position of our ordered pair. There's our X, three, and in three hours they made 600 pancakes. In four hours, once again, that is our X coordinate. Our Y coordinate is 800 pancakes. And to use some uh, vocabulary from previous lessons, this is our independent variable. This is our dependent variable. It, how many pancakes you make depends on how long you can stay and make those pancakes. All right, and finally, our last ordered pair, we have five, 
for our x coordinate and we have 1000 for our y coordinate in our ordered pair. Choose an appropriate scale for each axis of, of the graph, meaning what are, what's going to be the count bys in your graph. Label the axis and give the graph a title. All right, so graph a point for each ordered pair. So first, they started our scale for us. Their count bys are 100. This line right here represents 100. This one represents 300. So we have 100, 200, 300, 400. Now if we did count bys that were only ones, this would be a gigantic graph. So they are um, making this a little easier by uh, using larger scale or count bys for the graph. So this would be 500 on this line. In fact, we'll just go ahead and write that in. And then 600, 700, 800, 900, and 1,000. All right, down here, our count bys or our scale is by one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six, even though our data doesn't go out to six. All right, now finally we're gonna graph a point for each ordered pair. So our ordered pairs, let's, let's zoom out a little bit so that we can see our ordered pairs, good. All right, so we have one and 200. So that's our first point connects one and 200 right here. You went up to 200, you went across to one, that's the first point. All right, our second point is two and 400. So we're gonna start at two, go up to 400, and from 400 we're gonna go across to the two and put a dot right there. With three, we're going to, our um, ordered pair for three is three and 600. So we're going to go up from the three all the way to the 600 and across to the three. And there we go. There's our third point. For number four, we're going to start here. So our ordered pair is four and 800. So we're going to go up to 800 and across from 800 over to the four and put a dot. We're gonna do this one last time with the five. We're gonna start at five, and our ordered pair is five one thousand. So we're going to go up from the five all the way up to the one thousand. From the one thousand, we're gonna come across to the five, and there's our point. And we have now graphed our ordered pairs. Nicely done. All right, let's take a look at the next page. Here we have, the table shows the relationship between the number of bicycles, y, so this is our dependent variable, Sean has left to assemble, and the number of hours, h, he has worked. So that's our independent, this is our dependent variables in our table. Graph the relationship represented by the table to find the unknown value of y. So we have one that we don't know right here. So we're gonna graph, use a graph to determine what this value is. So we're gonna write our ordered pairs. Use each row of the table to write an ordered pair. Skip the row with the unknown y value. So they don't want us to use this uh, row because we don't know the y value yet. So we have 0, 10. We have 1, 8. So in an hour, he's assembled two of the bikes. So now he's down to only eight bikes that he needs to assemble. We're skipping this row. Three, four, so he only has four bikes left after three hours. And four, two is my last ordered pair. So at four hours, he only has two bikes left. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and graph what we have um, and find the missing value. So. 
we have 0, 10. They did that one for us. 0, 10. Whoops, I'm not on the screen. 0, 10. All right, our next one is 1, 8. So 1, 8. Notice that my dots are at a conjunction of two lines. They're not floating out here in the middle of a, of a space. Okay, that's where two lines intersect. All right, here we go. We have now three, four, and we have four, two. Now what we don't know is this one. And we can figure that out now using our graph. What we're going to do is use a straight edge. We're gonna borrow this. Make a straight edge and line up the dots like that. Draw a line. Gotta make sure it's straight. Draw a line through them all the way from the 10. And we discover what the value of um, two is at two hours. How many bikes did he complete? Let's go all the way up and look at that. How many did he complete? Six. <laughs> or he had six left. All right. So we found the unknown value. When X has a value of two, Y has a value of six. Right here, two, six. So after two hours, Sean has six bicycles left to assemble. Nice job, we'll do one more example. Okay, here we go. Graph the relationship represented in the table. I'm on page 373. So here is our independent variable line in the table. Here is our dependent variable line in the table. We have one, or our count bys are one, two, three, four. So they're count bys one. Down here we have 50, 100, 150, 200. So we're, we're increasing by 50s. Write the ordered pairs. So at one, we have 50. At two, we have 100. At three, we have 150. At four, we have 200, so four, 200. Remember the X value always has to be first in an ordered pair. The Y value always has to be second. Mathematicians love order, and so when you're doing ordered pairs, it always has to be an alphabetical order. X always has to come first. All right, so let's go ahead and graph it now. We have one, 50, they did the first one for us. Two, and we're gonna go up to 100. So we're gonna go all the way up to 100. Notice their intervals or their count bys. Those are um, synonyms, intervals and count bys. Their intervals are 25. So their count bys are by 25, 25, 50, 75, 100, and so on. All right, at three, when x equals 3, y equals 150. So we're going to go all the way up here to 150. That's where they meet. Good. And our final um, ordered pair is 4, 200. So we're going to start at 4, go all the way up to 200. All right. And we have graphed. Um, the four ordered pairs from the table. Now you can keep going on your own. All right, now for our notes. Here we go. Graph relationships. An ordered pair, X always comes first. Um, think alphabetical order, Y always comes second. Remember the battleship game. All you're doing with this lesson is um, finding the, the junction of two coordinates just like the battleship game. X is always horizontal on the line. Y is always vertical. 
on the um, graph. Intervals or dashes are the same as count bys. So here our count bys are just by one. Uh, X is the independent variable. Y is the dependent variable. If they give us a table and a problem, that makes it really easy to graph. All we have to do is make our ordered pairs, which are here. Let's go ahead and write them out. Our ordered pairs are 125, 125, 2, 50, 3, 75, 4, 100, and I'm going to squeeze this last one in here, 5, 125. So 125, 2, 50, 3, 75, 4, 100, 5, 125. All right, you may um, copy the notes. Uh, either pause this or go ahead and copy the notes from the um, PDF that's included in the Google Classroom.